here's what we've got going today. Uh, we've got two engines here. This is the old engine out of the Falcon. This is the new uh, 5.0 roller motor that I'm putting together for uh, the Falcon. Uh, so the reason I'm changing the blocks is because this was not a roller motor. I wanted a roller cam and all the benefits that, that come with that. So I got this block. This block is a 1997 uh, Explorer block. Nothing, nothing super high speed about it. I did have it line honed and bored and what we're going to do today is we're going to roll this thing over, take some measurements of the crank journals, compare them to our new crank, make sure everything's on factory size, and that the new bearings that we've got for this motor are the correct size. Now the reason this is such a big deal to me, uh, and I'm going to use a dial board gauge if I didn't already mention that, the reason I'm going through all this trouble is when I put this motor together, I did not do that. And uh, maybe it was a lack of experience at the time, or uh, I was in a rush or whatever it was, this motor started eating bearings about uh, a year ago. So I want to make sure that with this motor we're not going to have that problem. There is a little bit more money into this build and uh, a little bit more effort so I, I really just want to dial it in, make sure everything's super duper squared away and that uh, all the tolerances are right. So let's get the new Eagle crank out of the box, we'll put a mic on that and I'll show you that and then we're going to roll this motor over and take the caps off, set up the dial bore gauge and take some measurements to make sure that uh, our tolerances are right where they need to be. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some, some main measurements here. One, two, three, four, five, uh, five mains on the small block Ford crank. So we're going to take those measurements and see what they are. Okay, the first one, and that's right on the money. That is, I don't know if you can see that. Will it focus? Probably not. There you go. Two, two forty nine, and that's right on the money. That is, uh, that's uh, factory size. So I'm just going to write everything down here uh, from the from the uh, balancer end. Uh, number one is two, and two forty nine. So we're right on the money there. Let's check number two. Two and two forty nine as well. Uh, good stuff. So yeah, this is an eagle crank. Um, I kind of expected this to to be uh, very accurate. Um, okay, uh, number three. Let's see. And this one is the thrust position. It's where the thrust bearing goes. Uh, so this area is what takes up the lateral slack and uh, the thrust bearing in the middle actually keeps the bearing from walking. Well, it's supposed to keep the bearing or the uh, crank from walking back and forth. Anyways, let's see what we got here. Two and 249. Two and 249. Okay, I'm just going to leave it locked this time and run it through because I'm willing to bet that it's the same. Ooh, a half thou, maybe half thou. Uh, two and I'm gonna call two and two forty nine. Two and two forty nine. You know, what, let me just check that again. Right on the money. Two and two forty nine. That was that was me just fat fingering it. Okay, two and two forty nine. One last time. Let's see. Eh, oh, that is something a little different. Let's see what we get. A half thou under. Let's see. Let's try it again.
in case you haven't seen what the machining looks like when you line hone or have something line hone, uh, it looks like that. Kind of just like the bore. Nice uh, cross hatch pattern. Pretty cool. And these are brand new bearings, uh, Clevites. I've always ran Clevites, had pretty good luck with them. Although the last motor ate them, but uh, I don't think that was the, the bearing's fault. It was probably the engine. Now you really want to be careful with these bearings um, when you're unpacking them and you just handling them in general. You want to keep them free from nicks and, and burrs and things of that nature. Uh, because the crank and the life of that crankshaft depends on on these so we need to keep them uh, keep them in a, in a good way and all these bearings are factory size bearings uh, so they're not uh, oversized or anything of that nature All right, so as I've mentioned, uh, cleanliness and precision here is kind of the name of the game. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the cap and also um, the, uh, the journal that's in the block and we're gonna clean it real thoroughly. Uh, this is just some denatured alcohol and we're gonna get it all on the cap and really, was, I like the, sh the blue shop towels by Scott. I don't know if, uh, if you guys use those or not, but they're awesome. They don't leave a bunch of garbage on stuff so uh, anyways what, what you want to do here is is all these mating surfaces you want them super clean and the reason for that is so you get an accurate reading just a, an oil film is enough to throw off a, a measurement you know something in the thousandth of an inch it's enough to throw it off uh, just by being present there so you really want to make sure this is nice and super super clean uh, so when we do um, slam them together in the motor that we've got an accurate reading on, uh, on what exactly we're looking at so Nice and clean is the name of the game here. Okay, those are good. Now if you take a look at the bearings here, if you don't know this, um, here's some some interesting uh, information about the bearings. There, there's eight bearings here, and uh, well, other than the thrust bearings, you'll notice that the these four look different than these four, and the reason being is that these have a passageway for the oil to make it through to the crank. So they sit on the crank in such a fashion that uh, the oil passages in the block, or you can't see that, stand by. There we go. They sit on the, uh, the crank in such a way that the oil passage from the block is able to feed oil through here and then through the, uh, the feed hole into the crank and keep everything nice and lubricated. So this, the, the slotted end here goes in, yeah, the slotted end here is what, uh, let's see if we can, there we go. The slotted end here is what goes into the block and the top end here is what's gonna sit in the cap. This side goes for the cap. Okay, just a little bit of denatured alcohol down here on the block side. I'm gonna get all the oil off of this thing. And it's really important, like I said, it'll throw the measurements off. And I had this block sitting for a little while, so I coated it in some dry lube and that stuff has some, uh, some big time surface area to it. So make sure you really, really get it all squared away nice and clean. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna roll the bearings in. Now you can see there is a notch here on the block and that is to receive this notch here into the, uh, into the bearing. Now you, you'll you see guys do this a bunch of different ways. Some guys locate the notch and then roll the bearing in. Some guys free float it out here and let the notch center it. Uh, I don't I don't think that there is a, uh, a right or wrong way to do that, to be honest with you. But, okay, there that side is in, and we're just gonna give it a quick wipe down here. And what's interesting is that if one side is a little proud of the other side, that's fine because when you bring the cap down, the cap is going to kind of roll the two uh, together and make them, uh, make them match up where they need to be. And here is our cap, so we'll just do the same thing here. The bearing is in the cap, just like it needs to be. And there's an arrow on the front of the cap indicating the front of the engine. 
Now you put them on there just like so and install your washers and your nuts and we'll give them a torque down to spec and then we will uh, set up the dial bore gauge. So in case you're not familiar, this is a dial bore gauge. It's basically a way to take a, uh, a measurement of an inside diameter uh, very accurately. And all this is basically, it, it's, it's uh, a lever. It, it turns a, a measurement this way and uh, through some rods and stuff and, you know, measuring magic, it reads it out here. And this is just a regular dial indicator, uh, nothing, uh, nothing super fancy. So uh, I'm not going to get into too much how this tool works. Uh, if you want that, I mean, we could do a video on it or something. But uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this thing up, or I have set this up. with. There's different size anvils here. These are called anvils. And uh, we, we set it up to where when the, the, uh, the dial reads zero, we're on size with the, uh, with the crank. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the difference between what the crank reads and what the inside diameter of those new bearings are. Now, the, you do want some room. Um, so kind of the rule of thumb is you want typically about a thousandth of an inch for every inch of diameter. So we're 2.249. So realistically, we want about two and a half thousandths. And the, the tighter it is, everyone, you know, thinks, oh, it's tighter, it's more, you know, it's better, it's a race engine, it's tighter. Yes and no, um, you can get away with, with tighter tolerances if you run a higher end bearing and uh, thinner oil. So what happens when you have less distance between uh, two surface areas, the pressure of whatever fluid in there is going to go through the roof. So what it does is it, it puts a lot of... Um, outward pressure on the bearing surfaces and just that pressure from the oil is enough to uh, prematurely wear the bearings if you don't have a bearing that is designed for that. Uh, so we want about three thousandths of an inch and that's going to be plenty for the, uh, the bearings that we're running, just the, the stock replacement Clevite 77s. Uh, typically people like to run a looser bearing tolerance in boosted engines, which uh, this is going to, it is a supercharged engine and it may be a turbo engine down the road. Um, so we're, we're, we're okay with, with 3000s. I'm hoping that's what it is, but we're going to take some numbers here and see where it sits. So what we want, let's see what we can get this way, there's two and a half thousandths again, two and a half thousandths.
we're just gonna check crankshaft end play. Everything's torqued down. And what we'll do is we'll run the uh, crank all the way rearward and zero the indicator. It's already zeroed right there. And then we'll run it forward. And it looks like I've got about three thousandths of crank end play, which is fine. The next thing we'll do is we'll take a look at what kind of force it's taken to uh, to rotate the crank. Uh, an acceptable number is somewhere around uh, 10 to 15 pounds to uh, roll the crank over. So we'll take a look at that. So I have my torque wrench set at 10 foot pounds and we'll see just how much it takes to rotate the crank. Uh, it takes like nothing. So this crank is, uh, it, it, it's, um, everything's new and it, it fits very well, very precise. So the friction's pretty low and it's, it's well within spec here. So I'm very happy to see how free this thing turns. Everything's torqued, all the main caps and the thrust bearing are torqued down to 70 foot pounds and this thing rotates like this, that is exactly what you want, just perfect. Hey guys, if you've made it this far, thanks so much. Uh, this is definitely the longest video I've done so far. Um, but there's so many kind of um, real particular things about the rotating assembly that I thought might have been kind of important to share. So I really wanted to make sure I got all that stuff out. So thank you if you've stuck around this far. Um, also, uh, if you're into this sort of thing and you like what you see here, please um, consider uh, consider dropping a, a like, comment, or uh, subscribing. Uh, I plan on doing a, a build series with this uh, with this engine uh, into the Falcon, and then also um, I have some some plans, uh, motorsports plans with the car that I want to do. And the idea is kind of to follow it all the way through building the motor, and then tuning the suspension and, and doing some autocross events and different kinds of events with the car. So uh, again, if that's something you're into, please um, hang around for that. Uh, and um, also watch for continued um, videos on the, uh, the engine coming together. Next thing is probably going to be uh, connecting rods and pistons and rings and ring gaps and, and things of that nature. And the, the videos will probably be, you know, 15, 20 minutes long, kind of like this one was. Because uh, that information is really particular. And uh, again, just uh, something noteworthy. The way I do this is not the only way to do this. There's, there's tons of different ways uh, to, to skin the cat here. Uh, the way I am doing it is the way that I've been taught um, by my grandfather and, and my dad. And it's, um, it's, uh, it's been successful. Mostly, except for that motor, which ate bearings. But <laughs> um, anyhow, uh, thank you so much. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Oh,